Ambassador Osman, pleasure to have you. It's also my pleasure. We know that the FOCAC meets every three years and is going to be held in Beijing this time around. Share with us your expectations of the forum this time and could it channel some more consensus uh, in China and African countries to address some of the challenges that the world is facing today? Uh, first of all, I think we have to go back to the idea itself of, of establishing the FOCAC. The cooperation and the relations between China and Africa are, I mean, goes back to to many years ago, not the FOCAC was only established in 2000. But the importance of the FOCAC is that it is a sort of a mechanism that governs the relations between China and Africa. In order to make it more useful, more uh, interactive, because every three years, we, this mechanism meets every three years, not only three years, but in between, we have meetings for the senior officials, we have meetings for the ambassadors in Beijing, for instance, and we have a conference, I mean, ministerial conference. So, as such, it is a forum that helps us to deal with many issues relating bilateral issues between China and Africa, per se. And the good thing is that we, I mean, our vision and our concerns with China are convergent. And one sub-event under the FOCAC is uh, the China-Africa Economic and Trade Expo, which contributed to a very uh, considerable trade portfolio of $282 billion last year. And Kenya, for example, has become Africa's largest flower exporter to China. So how important are these uh, sub-forums or uh, events on the sidelines in trying to implement the vision of the FOCAC? The, the, as, as you remember that uh, during the FOCAC of Dakar FOCAC in 2021, which was held in Dakar, Senegal, it was agreed that the, the, the share of African trade with China should be raised over the coming three years, that is from 2021 to 2024, up to 300 billion dollars. I think we are, we are approaching that figure. During these three years, we managed to cross a lot of grounds with regard to the exportation of our our products to, to China. You made the example of Kenya's uh, uh, flowers, for instance, and also the avocados is one of the uh, very important products in Kenya and it was now in the Chinese market. The coffee, not only from Ethiopia, it is from Rwanda as well. Uganda is also uh, looking for the market. And also I think e-commerce has helped in, in this uh, regard because uh, it, it gives the Chinese uh, importers the chance to know what is going on in Africa and what is produced in Africa and the standardization of the production in Africa. What are some of the initiatives that have already been in place to, you know, take care of the different development needs of individual countries in Africa? And one of these biggest issues now we are already implementing is the Africa Free Trade Area. If we want to promote trade, we need to promote an intra-Africa trade, first of all. And in order to promote intra-Africa trade, we need, we need assistance from China in areas where industrialization and financing, infrastructure, all those areas are very important for the, for the multilateral. China is doing a lot in different African countries. If we take, for instance, the infrastructure over the last uh, 20 years, um, uh, it is estimated that 10,000 kilometers, 100,000 kilometers of roads built by China in Africa. So a lot, a lot is done by, through this FOCAC mechanism and through the Belt and Road, both of them. Right, and now uh, dozens of major cooperation documents and development agenda have been set in place to try to help um, African countries and China. Now there's a lot of focus and emphasis on industrialization of Africa and agricultural modernization. How have that concern been addressed and how has China contributed along the way. We in Africa, we believe that one of the problems that African economies face is the exportation of raw material. We don't have added value to our products. So this could not happen without industrialization, to add value to our products. And this will raise definitely our economies. So with regard to China, if you remember last year, uh, His Excellency Xi Jinping in Johannesburg uh, declared that China will, uh, will help Africa in four, three areas. One of them is industrialization, agricultural modernization, and talent, talent or capacity building. These are three areas are well connected. I mean, you cannot talk about industrialization in Africa specifically, as the agriculture is the locomotive of industry. 
in, in Africa. So if we merge the two together, I think we could do better. This will add value to our products and this will also um, improve the living conditions of our people. It will give more jobs uh, for our people and uh, this will raise also the GDP of most of our, of our countries. Well, you mentioned talent development. That's certainly crucial for any society to grow. And right now, uh, more than 60% of Africa's population are under 25 years old. So that certainly represents huge um, development opportunities. How have African countries been doing in trying to nurture these talent and train their future growth? And how has China helped along the way? Yeah, it, this is one of the biggest challenges for Africa because, the, as you said, that this is the majority of the population, 60% are youth, and all these, they look for jobs. And we have to create jobs. And the industrialization is one of the areas where we would like to see how we can provide them. But if you have industrialization without having talented people to lead this industrialization or even agriculture, it's been very difficult to achieve the goals. So this is why with China we have many projects in order to improve and order to offer more uh, opportunities for the training of work. Now we have thousands of African students studying in China and we have also this Luban uh, workshops which were now in many African countries. I would like to expand on this. And I think it is uh, highly important and we recognize that we have to do a lot on the talent in order to promote our, our population uh, capacities. And uh, this was the only way to achieve the goals of the even the 2063 agenda. Well, China is the largest developing country and Africa has the largest number of developing countries. Uh, so. What are some of the future areas of cooperation you think the two sides could work on very closely to collaboratively address the challenges that the world is facing today? We need to cooperate on all areas. Climate change is an issue now. Although Africa is not contributing to the damages of the climate change, but we are suffering from the impact of the climate change. But we are working on that and we have uh, specific plans for how to combat uh, the climate change. Uh, so one of the most important issues is the, is the reform of the Security Council, for instance, or the United Nations system, as says, and the, and the global financial system. This is the most serious problem which we are facing in Africa. That is, it's, we, f we feel that uh, the, the global financial system is not in our favor at all. And this is not something new for the developing countries. We are calling for the international new economic international order since the 70s. But nobody have listened to us. But still now the situation is more aggravated. And we are looking forward and China, we are discussing this issue also with China and we are hoping that together we could do more in this regard. Ambassador Osman, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Sorry.